how about this weekend? Which matchup to you is going to look the the most different? Because you've got repeat matchups. Um, and on one side, I guess to answer my own question, yeah. Tampa, they're like a totally different team. But does that mean that because they're better, they're going to win 48 to 6? Like, no. 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 Green Bay's... That was such a weird... So I went back and watched both these games. Good, me the too. Green, I love it. I love this. The Green Bay one's like a total aberration, I feel like. Like, Tampa just kicked their asses up front. Um, and Rodgers, like, just went... I, who was I talking to about this? Um, I, I was taking a pod earlier today with um, Sam Monson, and I was like, I don't I feel like Sue got in Rodgers' head or something when you watched it, because he was yeah. killing them. And right, it was just such an era and characteristic game from what we've seen and from Aaron Rodgers this season. Um, I do think Tampa's defense matches up pretty well with Green Bay because of the speed they have at linebacker. Um, God, but- the whole first quarter was like, like playing the toss porn. It was Devin White, yeah, just like, just night. I mean, they ran perimeter runs like four times and. Uh, it, that's why he made such a big difference coming back this week. You know, we talk about New totally. Orleans and New Orleans and losing Quan, and then Devin coming back. It was like the great equalizer in the middle of the field. Oh, interesting. I just feel like Gronk's a different guy. You know, Gronk looks different running around. Um, AB who's hurt uh, and somehow became like a quiet member of a football team has looked different. So Tom looks different. The offense looks different. Who do you, who do you actually have winning? I, you know, it's going to be more competitive. I mean, we've kind of in, in, inferred that. Yeah. Um, I still lean green Bay or I do lean green Bay. It is. They're the favorite. What is it? Three, three four. And a half. I got it at four. Cause I like Tampa so much. Oh. I put the mortgage on Tampa Sunday there. I mean, I was, <laughs> I was like team Brady. I thought for a second, I thought for a second, Brady made one of those witch deals with like where the, the punchline is he can't beat Drew Brees. In the I same. mean, Tom Brady didn't fucking do anything in that game. No, all but, he did was just yeah. But, but Drew Brees um, did a lot less. I know, and that, we were talking earlier about like the I was right and I was wrong. I was like at the beginning, the Saints fans have been going after me because all season I said this defense is elite, but at the very end of the season, Brees is going to do the same thing he's done the last three years. And as I was watching it, I didn't feel the self like gratification I expected. You felt bad. I just felt bad. It was really hard to watch the like third turnover. I was like, ah. I think that Green Bay is going to win because I think the Packers' offense is just absolutely rolling right now. I think they're clicking away that Tampa Bay's offense is not. And while I think the Bucks' defense is slightly more talented across the board, um. I think that the Packers pass rush seems to be peaking at the right time. How about Rashawn Gary coming out of nowhere? Yeah, and, like, yeah. It's the thing about young pass rushers, man, like, Can especially a kid like him who seemed like he was just kind of, he had a little bit of, like, you know, sometimes we say grown up to do, we're talking about a kid who's a shithead. He's, it wasn't, a, he just had to mature a little bit, you know, and, and there is like, he's walking into a room where there's a lot of good players. Um, and it just takes a year sometimes. It takes two years sometimes. And he has yeah. been coming into his own. And and I love Zadarius Smith. Like there's, n- well, he's just it's so just, he's consistent. All machine, dude. And Ooh, this is the game where also so the Bucks lost. So the whole thing with Bates, right? Um, well, so they lost the guard. So this, it's a they got like a practice squatter who's been playing guard. Aaron Stinney is his name. So yeah, so well, Stinney went yeah. to my high school. Did you know that? What really? Yeah, dude. We don't get a lot of guys in the league. Is this another one? You're uh, so. If, Aaron, if you're listening, I'm not. Now I'm worried. That it's another. He does It's his wanna... first start in the playoffs, and Tom Brady's yelling at he... him about false start. He actually did fine. It's just that, like, it's just gonna be. It's just gonna be a, a wild ride when that's the situation you're kind of throwing. He had, in. He had a, like a false start or something, and and Brady was upset. And uh, I don't know if it was Collinsworth who was calling the game. I can't remember, but the first, that's the first St. Anne's Belfield kid that ever got yelled at by Tom Brady. I'm proud to say Tom never yelled at me. So well, he was like, Tom Brady doesn't like, you know, he doesn't like the false starts. It's like, nobody likes false nobody starts. Likes well, quarterbacks start. like, Hey, it's okay, man. I don't mind. Yeah. Do that <laughs> you know, again but, next quarter. Anyways, this is not the game where you want a backup guard, backup, backup guard against fucking Kenny Clark. No. And he had a, he had a really nice game the first time and the Packers, their pressure rate so was, so I think good. their best all season. Um, so, so they're, good. they're coming into their own. That having been said, I am taking the bucks. I already, I already Ooh. got the bucks on the books. Right. The, to me, Green Bay wins the Super Bowl If the bucks 
are, are not around at this point. You know, I, I really think it's that much of a matchup thing and I could be dead wrong. Um, the conversation we just had about, you know, the media and being wrong and right. So don't kill me, but I think, I think Tampa wins this game. And then on the other Mm -hmm. side of things, I don't know what to expect. Okay. My theory on Pat is the choke out theory. I have really substantive reason to believe that. Oh, what happened to him? Carotid artery. He was out. It was weird. He, he wasn't, he wasn't concussed. Now you can get a concussion without hitting your head on the ground. Cause if you saw it, like he didn't hit his head on the ground. I think, you know, like when you're looking at that, you're either looking at a situation where his brain hit the front of his skull or whatever. I'm no fucking doctor, but that can happen without hitting your head. Needless to say, I do hear though, that it was a carotid artery thing. I think he's going to be fine. So if he's fine, how do you, how do you see this thing play out? So assuming he plays, if he doesn't play, just, you know, don't watch anything is possible though. <laughs> I was trying to make Henny given Sunday happen. And then Mahomes big timed me with anything is possible. I think Henny, Henny given, given Sunday. Sunday is way better. Pat Mahomes. Way better. So Patrick, Patrick, Patrick. Sorry, bro. He's a fucking, he's a legend. I'm not going to call him the wrong name. H- Henny given Sunday. Anyways. I think Henny given Sunday is better. I think so too. I was going to Photoshop him, which for me is just Microsoft paint. Cause I don't know how you use Photoshop. Um, on to Willie Beam. But then I was like, this might be weird because I'm, you know, and for no reason I didn't do it. But um, I'd like to see it, you know, like if you have to share it with somebody, you can just show me. I'm <laughs> totally cool with it. Um, you want to know a fucked up thing after this weekend? Nobody feels worse than for me than Aaron or for Aaron than me because I still see like a rookie, you know, like even though he's the baddest man on the planet. Oh, when he was such, crying. He's such a good dude, man. And you know, like guys cry for games sometimes, like usually you make it to the locker room maybe, but when I was watching him cry, I was thinking about, I did a background as a reporter. I did a story on Jalen Ramsey and um, he cried his first year in the league. Do you remember? So Jacksonville was losing to fucking Detroit and Ramsey was on the sideline, just oh, yeah. crying and people were roasting him. And so then I interviewed him. I'm like, uh, were you embarrassed? He's like, no, I mean, I'm not going to do James Ramsey. I love him, by the way. Yeah. He's like, no, he's like, he's like, it's not my fault. We were losers and I cared more than everyone else. And I was like, exactly. God, I fucking love you. It's but the I most defensible him, position. Like we snuck totally so is. It was so hurtful but, to me that I shed tears on the field. But I was like, these two dudes just really care. Like, this is and the that's, truth, man. that's why they're amongst like the freaking best player. Like, to ever play to ever play. Yeah, man. They're unbelievable. So, um, ever play. so I actually like the bills. Oh, I was going to say about Patrick. Um, and this is, I think, a case for the Bills. I'm going to decide within like the first. I respect that. You don't have to give me a prediction today. We have all week. Plus, there's okay. weather. I'm doing, but I'm, I'm, I'm picking the Chiefs. But I'm also, when I watch the game, I feel like it's one of those games where we're going to know in the first, like the first Chiefs drive, mm-hmm. um, if they'll have a chance. Because first, I think the Bills offense matches up really well with the Chiefs defense. We can talk yeah. about that. But, um, Patrick, so bef- it's to me not just like a one and zero thing about whether he plays. He hurt his foot, and yeah. as as much as a killer as he is in pocket, out of pocket, whatever, I can't get out of my mind watching him after he came back from the ankle last year and seeing how much his game was affected by his lack of mobility. Like there was a, a four or five game stretch. There was a month. Yeah, last season where everyone's like, "Wow, teams the killer to play Patrick Mahomes is man coverage." Just like no or hyper, or, or dislocating his knee. Yeah, really. Like he can't he he can't do Patrick Mahomes things. And um, like the last time, so when I went back and watched the last time the Bills played the Chiefs, they like did not blitz him once. They just sat back there and they were like, "Run the ball, please." Mm-hmm. And I think that's the best approach generally when you play Patrick Mahomes. But if he's gimpy, I think. The Bills pass rush, which also is uh, better as the season has gone on, can get after him a little bit. So we're going to see sure. really quickly if they can. They sure can have. And I, I love you, you're standing for the right people here, Mina, as a pass rusher, because, you know, Jerry Hughes, you mentioned. Oh, uh, yeah. Jerry Hughes, you mentioned. It's Baltimore. Yo! Who's one of the most underappreciated rushers of the last eight to 10 years. What did you think about my theory? It's because he's named Jerry. It, so Jerry's just don't get any, any, what if his um, name was like, uh, what if he had like a badass name? Like, I don't know. Wolf cool Blitzer. 
Wolfgang. Wolf Blitzer's a, a Bills fan too. See how that works? Oh out? shit, I love that. Okay. So I was like, Jerry Hughes needs a cool nickname and then maybe people would pay more attention to him. But it's crazy because he's been like the only dude in Buffalo forever, just you quietly know, racking has. up like double digit sack seasons. The, the uh, bridge between him and how about, do you remember, it was one of my favorite rushers was Aaron Schobel. Uh, oh my God. Like there was the Aaron Schobel and then there was like a dead period for a couple of years with Mario Williams. But Jerry Hughes has been like one of the most consistent pressure and disruption guys in the league for a long time. And so I loved him getting home on that big stage because he's waited a long time, you know, like the, the, the Kyle Williams yeah. farewell, the Jacksonville 10 to seven game or whatever. Nobody was watching that. This was his chance, like not just the two sacks, the, the, the throw he affected that allowed them to get that pick yeah. six, the very next play. Like, like he just really deserved that. You know what I'm really impressed on the D line front? You got through this whole thing without bringing up Vita Vey. Let's talk about him. I'm worried though, because he's coming. I mean, that dude's like, you know, 800 pounds. Yeah, and he's a big cat, dude. <laughs> he's coming back. And I didn't think he would come back this season. It was fractured ankle, right? I don't remember what it was. Some kind of injury where I was like, 800 pound person should not be walking on that. And <laughs> you should have injured the top part of the chain at some point they're not the my understanding of human biology yeah. and so all, all of a sudden you start seeing these reports like vietnam has been cleared to return and i was like what right. i was actually really impressed by how the bucks defense is held up without him because yeah. you're talking about like are you one of the best defensive tackles in the game and to ha potentially have him back against green bay of all teams where yeah. you you know on first and second down it's so important but i don't know if he'll look a hundred yeah. Yeah. What's a, a storyline that you've been tired of this week going into these big games? Which one's overblown? Going into these big games, let me think. I That's think on just, the spot, so take your time. Yeah, no, generally, like, Bra I, I don't like quarterback versus – like, Brady versus Breeze is – or not Breeze, pardon me. Well, that was overblown last week. Yeah, Brady, Brady versus, versus Rogers. Rogers. To me, it's, like, much more – I don't know. There's no interleague play like like everybody's like he just his first year in the NFC. I'm like I just noticed now. Like I really I just watched the yeah, games. Okay, I don't care that he's never been in the NFC playoffs. So I do I do think that's a little bit um, blown out of proportion. I would say that um, just like yeah, generally with the Bucks too. I think I don't know. There's a lot of I feel like people put too much emphasis on like we know kind of who Tom Brady is. If you don't pressure him, he's awesome. Especially know. at this age, I, I mean, I don't yeah. know who expected a like that. an MVP candidate like this year. I don't like if you expected an MVP candidate for 17 weeks out of Tom Brady. That's not like you were you hadn't watched football. It's like he's a still a good quarterback who still throws some really nice balls and is a field general and a, a leader and that type of thing. Even though he yelled at somebody against Chicago, I know. Um, people freaked out about that. He's not going to be a guy who carries a team. Like this was supposed to be a dream team. They weren't supposed to win the division. They were supposed to be a wild card berth. It played out exactly as we thought. And they're here. I don't know, man. I, they're just so sloppy. That's the only thing that worries me on one of their scoring drives last week. There was like Fournette runs the wrong way on a counter. You have a drop, you have a false start. And then, you know, you have to burn a timeout. Like Tom is losing his mind down there. You know what I mean? <laughs> I feel like does anyone run the wrong way on counters more than <laughs> yeah, Leonard Fournette. I'm not even like a run game specialist and I especially in real time, but I'm like you went the wrong way. Yo, I really I like something. Leonard Fournette because he is the most normal human being. Like, I think he's so funny. He's so I think he's hilarious. He's so he, he just he's so every man to me because it seems like he fucks every man shit up. Like he's yes, hundred percent, undeniably a good player. Undeniably yeah, he, talented. He had nice hands though in that game in um the Saints game. It's about was, time I, I, somebody catches the ball out of the backfield there for Brady. Yeah, yeah, they're the high variance team. Like I think with every other team, we kind of know what we're getting. I, the Bucks. That's why I don't think. Green Bay wanted to play them. I think they would have, I mean, obviously they got their asses kicked by them in the season, but I think they would have much would have rather played New Orleans, even though oh, Orleans they would have heated better. them up. Well, they've got a better defense, but yeah. you know, they, they, they know what they're getting. They know breeze, you know, limitations, whereas the bucks, the thing you had at the wrong time on. Yeah. Or they can completely immolate. And you know what the bucks need to do is their coaches need to blindfold them and and not show them the play the uh the scoreboard so they don't know it's the first quarter ah, because yeah they are the worst first quarter offensive football team i've ever seen
the Bucks to be as good are, as are so Tampa. Yeah, I mean, just the identity of like, I don't want to look the Bucks in the eye when I walk by them on the street. That's how I feel about this team. You good, so. man? Yeah. Like, you guys whoa, good? Whoa, whoa. Have you been asleep all Have you been awake whoa. all night? Like, Every time they cut to Arians, I'm so worried about him. <laughs> He's just been about. progressively redder as the season goes along. And I feel like his mask is getting smaller. He and the old setup. I know. And legitimately didn't know it was him for a couple of weeks. I don't know what's so. going on. I've been thinking that it's overblown that Kansas City... Well, I did not think it was overblown that Kansas City plays everybody close. Mm. Uh, I was thinking that was a real problem. Am I being... Am I falling for the okie doke with that take that... You know, like... No. I just no. feel like you're, you're playing Russian roulette here a little bit. Well, I think during the regular... First of all, I think they would have um, stomped the Browns if Patrick had stayed in. They, me, when they came had, out in that first drive. I, yeah, you had, yeah. Ooh. I had the over and I also had Brown's first half. Okay. I don't know if you, I, did I tell you I had Brown's first half and that. Oh plunk- yes. Right. Because, um, gosh, wait, how did you say that to me? The other day I was talking about something in that game and it came up. Can't remember. But oh yes. no, you, you said, you said everybody cared about the, the end zone rule. And I was like, well, some people just cared oh, about yay. Brown's first half plus seven. Yeah, that rule. Um, and the over. But so anyways, after the first drive, the the first Chiefs drive, I was like, <laughs> they've been messing around all season. Like, you know, a dog playing with a bug, like in the mm-hmm. bugs, the NFL, they're the Chiefs. It was me all along. Yeah. Man Call voice. an ambulance. I love that guy. <laughs> but um, Let's find that guy. But then, you know, so I think there's a bit of that but there are problems with the team that explain the close games that go beyond andy reed fucking around and like you know having patrick mahomes line out wide and run rats um like there's weird things like they're the defense is f- deeply flawed past defense not just the run defense has issues um love chris jones but uh, aside from him in that front seven guys different games sometimes you get frank clark sometimes you don't you know um, linebacking groups kind of mixed too. And then, and then the secondary aside from again, Matthew is there's issues and like, you've got Bucker. who's like misses extra points randomly. Like there's things like he's that. Got a, I'm going to miss a big kick name. Some <laughs> kickers have some he's kickers too, have he, names that, you know, that are okay. going to go down to history at some point. He's too handsome. Is Bucker handsome? <laughs> Look him up right now. And not that I'm going to really and get like, back to me. Somebody's handsome, I guess, but, yeah, but I'm just kind of like, like, like y'all, like all women, like Leonardo DiCaprio. I could not tell Leonardo DiCaprio is handsome. Okay. But you're going to look at this picture and you're, like, you're going to get it immediately. Like he dresses up to get off the plane. I'm like, you're the kicker. Oh, can't be that. Right. I'm like, I mean, this, say, this guy say, looks like he's nine Oh two one Oh handsome. Right. Say, you know, like, but, but a kicker. The, this guy, I mean, he, he'd be on one of the Laguna Beach it. shows. But he's like slick too. He's wearing like designer clothes, walking out. And I'm, I just, it doesn't, I'm just like, this is. Celebrates a lot. You don't want your kicker looking too slick is a feeling. By the way, how a fucking Andy Reid. Just what? compared to oh, the compared all these like cowardly ass punts we had over the last two weeks. Andy Reid's like, oh, Andy <laughs> Reid. I want to line my backup quarterback and shotgun. Yeah, Stones. Yeah, I mean, Jesus, how Andy does that Reed guy walk? Stands, Dad, balls in the wheelbarrow. On and then when court. they showed him like trudging across the field with this little weirdo napkin mask, I was just like, mm-hmm. God, I fucking love this. He's a legend. They beat. They ran the the clock out on the Bucks the same way. Sprint right option early in the year, I think. Um, they finished the Bucks game that same way. 